It's a movie about an international secret army clad in spandex that rides around on high-tech off-road vehicles while facing off against a mercenary army who aren't wearing spandex. The name Cheese Patrol was taken, so instead this movie is called Megaforce. Hal Needham was, for many years, a Hollywood stuntman appearing in TV and movie productions where he developed a number of stunt techniques still in use. He moved up to stunt arranging and second unit direction before directing several movies full of stunts, such as Smokey and the Bandit and Cannonball Run. Megaforce would latch onto the early 80s love of gadgetry and genre fare, but without Burt Reynolds anywhere to be seen. Dallas, when a person doesn't have less on, they have more on? Exactly. With high-tech vehicles and weapons, Megaforce's high-octane action could meld action and sci-fi in a way that hadn't been done before. Let's see how that worked out. You know, even in the worst days of the Yemen desert campaign, we received more civilized treatment. And we were prisoners at the time. A mercenary named Guerrera is causing havoc in a geographically obtuse part of the world. Two fictitious countries are on the brink of a fictitious war and one of them seeks help from Megaforce. General Byrne White and Major Zara are sent to brief Megaforce and immediately there is friction, since Megaforce is rather casual. I'm from Megaforce, my name's Dallas. General Byrne White is very starchy and initially skeptical, though he quickly sees the potential in Megaforce. Zara's introduction to Megaforce's leader is what is known as a meat cute. I'm sure I've seen at least as much action as you have. Well, I don't... Oh, I... But it's a Hal Needham meat cute, so they go skydiving. Megaforce is an international force drawn from military forces of the free world who give up their best personnel and equipment. Or maybe they just want to be shot of their most brilliant jerks. Commander Hunter, I presume. Uh, call me Hunter. Their leader, Ace Hunter, might look like a cut price BG, but the role gave actor Barry Bostwick his first starring role after the other Barry, along with brothers Maurice and Robin, were likely on tour. The good guys always win, even in the 80s. Ace has a sort of thing with Major Zara, portrayed by Persis Kambata, whose hair seems to have grown back since her last gig. A perfect score. General Burn White is her smug, pompous boss, played by Edward Mulhair, who's possibly waiting around to see if that little TV pilot he did was picked up. And we deny any prior knowledge whatsoever. Michael Beck, star of Xanadu and the Warriors, is Dallas, Ace's 2IC. One time before I made a jump into the Nang, Old buddy of mine told me something made me feel a whole lot better. What? What, 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 what did he tell you? And there's a smattering of semi-familiar faces. Well, I recognise Evan Kim and Henry Silver, who had a long career as a stony-faced villain, but here he's fairly charismatic as the mercenary leader, Guerrera. You have one fatal flaw. You've never understood that they are, they are just numbers, numbers! And there's a reason we cut back to this guy in the control vehicle since that was director Needham, who often made small appearances in his films. The thrust of this film is a megaforce operation to try and drive Guerrera's tank army across a national border in order to allow Burn White's army to attack them on home soil and hopefully prevent a war. The logic is impeccable, apart from the thing that no one really thinks about until late in the film, that megaforce's intercession is already an act of war. Oops. Action films often play fast and loose with logic, but usually they don't draw attention to that and make it a major plot point. It's like copping a speeding ticket, not paying the fine, insisting on going to court to fight the ticket, and then you stand up and say, yes, your honor, I'm guilty, I'll pay the fine. Anyway, a great nighttime assault on a desert town sees Megaforce in their dune buggies and dirt bikes fire off lasers and rockets at any moving target. This is a sugar-frenzied 11-year-old's idea of the greatest movie of all time, the sort they jot down while in a post-Halloween sugar coma. This is how you get films like Willy Wonka and the Bazooka Factory. If you allow us to cross your border, you'll probably be at war within 24 hours. And I do. The penny drops and Megaforce has to either A, fight it out with Guerrera's tanks, or B, surrender. They choose option C, the motorbike stunt show in between the monster trucks. Ace is almost left behind but has one last trick, an experimental feature alluded to throughout the film. And yes, Ace's bike can fly, thanks to some magic. Okay, magic is perhaps pushing it. You love them in blue and you love them in red, but most of all you love them in blue. It's totally inapplicable to anything that's going on here. And it's dumb. Who told you that? You did. But it's very wise. 
Megaforce is that curiosity, a movie full of fairly ordinary ingredients that's still a damn good time. Basically the late night kebab of cinema. Uh, does, does anyone else see that? Is that, uh, do we need to mosaic that? Oh, it's his left hand. Keeping the food analogy, Megaforce is a movie best enjoyed on the couch while consuming pizza and whatever cool beverage best excites your taste buds because your brain cells are sure going to starve for about oh, 100 minutes or so. One thing that Guerrero is not is a fanatic. Everything that he does, he does for money. Is that a personal insight? I came that close to getting him back on our side. What happened? He stole my lighter. It's a fairly bloodless film with only a trio of mercenaries vaporized on screen. Bullets, shells, missiles, and lasers fly about with nary a, whoa, that was close. The best holograph we've seen yet. Uh, sir? Needham had a good eye for placing the camera and Megaforce always looks good. Stunts are plentiful and well executed. The film and its production design are always interesting to look at. The titles tout IntroVision, which was a fancy way of saying a lot of backdrops were achieved via front projection. You were born in Essex. Your daddy's rich and your mama's good looking. Now, Cesar, you got a helicopter that's red and white and that you like it so much you put in shag rugs and air conditioning. Megaforce also uses the Zoptic process developed for Superman the movie, which linked the controls of the projector with that of the camera. The main problem is, for a film with such great stunts, every time they fudge one by going to front projection, it looks pretty ordinary. Like that month-old ham and cheese panini you bought at the airport bar. And Jesus, I've just remembered it's still in my backpack. And your usual? The story is competent and the script better than you'd expect. Aside from the stunts, the banter is probably the best part of the film. Most of the characters have a level of charm not usually seen in action movies. Better than the usual director video action film, mainly because at the time they were hoping this would do well in theatres. The acting is fine for the most part. Most of Megaforce are fairly anonymous, but no one stands out as being outright bad. It seems we're here for the same purpose. To give him some terrific bad news. The plot unravels at the end of the second act faster than the wrapping paper off a six-year-old's birthday present. But hey, I went into Megaforce knowing exactly what I was getting. Fast food. Not the sort of fast food you instantly regret, but the sort where you'll finish and say, yeah, okay, I guess I've had worse, but I've certainly had better. If you were at the video library debating whether to rent Megaforce for the night or stare at a blank wall, I mean, it's a coin toss. Hong Kong-based film company Golden Harvest wanted to move into producing films for Western markets, and Megaforce was one of the results. With a $20 million budget and Needham's touch in making action films, hopes were high. <coughs> What's often overlooked, Megaforce was produced and co-written by Albert S. Ruddy. Yes, the producer of The Godfather, who declined to work on the sequel Why? in favour of movies with the likes of Burt Reynolds, which would lead him to working with Needham on films like Cannonball Run and then this. This is a bit like a hairdresser working on Marilyn Monroe one day and the next shaving off your kid's hair when one of them came home from school with head lice. <laughs> Megaforce was released in the summer of 1982, now looked on as a golden era of genre films, where one summer saw the release of acknowledged classics such as Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, Poltergeist, The Thing, Conan the Barbarian, Tron, and of course something called E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Never heard of it. Megaforce hit cinemas with the same dull splat as a case of really overripe bananas dropped several metres onto a concrete floor. Whether drive-ins, home video and sales to TV stations help recoup its budget is unknown, but Megaforce doesn't seem to have hit the same cultural zeitgeist as other fun yet silly films of the era, which found a profitable second wind on home video. I saw it, and many of you will have seen it, but its profile is not on the same level as a Flash Gordon or a Highlander. Which is a shame, it's almost as much fun, maybe just needed a Queen soundtrack to really kick things up a notch. Of course, the movie very quickly bypassed cinemas here, and when I saw it in the video rental library, we had to see it. The real pity with Megaforce, which is obviously unrelated to the toys of the same name, is that it didn't do better, as the core concept and characters are still a lot of fun. More could have been done with the concept. 
then as now it was fun enough. But I wasn't about to pretend to play Megaforce with my BMX. Well, okay, just that one weekend. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below or check out some of our other videos.